To thee we come, O Lord, our God. sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us pause and make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and so revealed his glory. And his disciples began to believe in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. O 
Almighty Father, you sent your Son to give us an example of holy life on earth. May we follow him worthily and direct all our thoughts and deeds toward you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father. On this day, we offer prayers for the repose of the soul of our faithful sister departed, Wanda Korber. Dear Lord, give her to her perpetual light and accept her into your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. On this, the second Sunday in the ordinary, we take the first reading from the Old Testament book of Isaiah the prophet. For Zion's sake I will not be silent, for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man carries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. The graduate. God added his testimony by signs, wonders, various acts of power, and distribution of the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service but the same Lord. There are different workings but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. There was a wait, wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tested the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at, as the beginning of his signs at Cana and Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. This morning, as part of the uh, today's bulletin, I actually have um, incorporated the sermon. So I ask that you please kind of follow along with me, and afterward, please take the bulletin with you and reflect upon these words. Prior to the delivery of the Word of God in the sermon or the homily or whatever you want to call it, we pray to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit might open up our minds and our hearts, that we might be able to be receptive to the wisdom and understanding, not from me, but from our blessed Lord using Holy Scripture. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. These words are taken from St. Paul the Apostle to the church at Galatia. I believe that when most of us hear the word Epiphany, we think of January 6th, the celebration of where the Magi, or the wise men from the East, were directed by a star, found the Christ child, and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word epiphany is derived from the Greek word epiphania, which is literally defined as an appearance or manifestation. In today's first in today's reading of the first letter of St. Paul to the Christian community in the city of Corinth, he writes, Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. 
spiritual gifts. Paul goes on to explain that the one in the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. You know, Paul was no stranger to the appearance or manifestation of a spiritual being. Consider for a moment of what took place on the road to Damascus as we read in the book of Acts chapter 9 verses 3 through 6. And he, Paul, neared Damascus on his journey. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. From this epiphany, Paul would be transformed from a persecutor of the Christian church to one of its greatest protectors. He would go on and write 14 letters or epistles found in the New Testament. Paul would not only complement the good news of Jesus, but he would lay the foundation of the Christian church. You know, the workings of the Holy Spirit were also to be an epiphany of the 120 men and women who were gathered in Jerusalem and who were instilled with the Holy Spirit. They, as Paul, were transformed. Transformed. That fits the second definition of the word epiphany, which is defined as a moment of sudden revelation or insight. Did not our Lord promise the Holy Spirit? Did not Jesus teach his disciples about the uniqueness of the Holy Spirit and the role of the Holy Spirit which was to play as we read in the Gospel of John. Jesus tells each of us, as he told his first chosen, that the Holy Spirit would, one, give unto the believer the miracle of a new birth, two, be the source of a believer's spiritual life, Three, would dwell within the Christian believer and sanctify the believer. Four, produce the character of Christ in the believer. Five, would give the believer strength and help the believer in how to pray. Six, would guide the believer in the wisdom and understanding of Holy Scripture. Seven, would give power unto the believer to witness Christ to others. And eight, would impart spiritual gifts unto the believer, to name but a few. My dear brothers and sisters, in a new year, many people make different resolutions. To eat healthier, to exercise more, lose a few pounds, and give up bad habits. There are some who will strive and keep in the new year to their personal resolutions, which in itself is a type of pledge or commitment. As Christians, my brothers and sisters, we are called upon in this new year to seek and to be strengthened by our own commitment to witness the life of the Holy Spirit, which is in each and every single one of us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not meant only to sanctify or to make holy the individual believer, but collectively to edify or to instruct the Christian church, both morally and spiritually. There are those who believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and strive to know how the Spirit of God will affect them as believers in the good news of Jesus. 
I think it comes down to matter of faith and belief. Again, we hear the words of St. Paul that speaks about some of these gifts. Brothers and sisters, to each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. Not only to the individual, but to the church as a whole. He writes, to one is given through the spirit of expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, <coughs> faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits, to another variety of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered as the body of Christ, may this new year bring to all of us the blessings of God, of health, happiness, and prosperity. But may it also be a new year in which we come to know the movement of the Holy Spirit within us, not only in ourselves, our families, but also in our parish. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Then the angel said to me, write this, Blessed are those who have been called to the wedding feast of the Lamb.
my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Sanctify these gifts, Lord our God, and cleanse us from the stain of sin. May we always be prepared to enter the wedding feast of the Lamb. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father. Receive the prayers for our blessed sister in memory, Wanda Corber, that she may be blessed by your love and accepted into your kingdom. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. For at this time we celebrate the triumph revelation. He was revealed to the Magi from the east. While yet a child, he was worshipped. He was revealed to all people at his baptism in the river Jordan. To who you, our Father, and the Holy Spirit gave witness to his divinity. He was revealed himself to his disciples in Cana of Galilee, making manifest the power of God through his miracle. Therefore, we he join this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, my brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus. And let us pray not only for their health, but also for their families and the wellness of themselves. In our prayers, let us give God thanks for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders and healthcare workers who strive daily to save others. In our most humble prayers, let us pray for all abuse and neglected children of our world, as well as all abuse and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we pray to our, our Almighty Father, to protect all those who serve in our armed forces and return them safely to their families. And let us pray 
my dear brothers and sisters for one another and all our loved ones, and all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and above honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of their grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servant, Wanda Corber, and especially our faithful departed, Prime Bishop Emeritus John Swantek, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant to us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, 
merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. present and future, and by the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you did say to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused from my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, prior to the partaking of the Blessed Sacrament, let us offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament 
in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this temporal gift become to us an everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, in whom these solely sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. declare the glory of God, the sky proclaims its builder's craft. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let 
let us pray. Almighty Father, you gave your Son the power to perform signs and miracles. Through the mystery of this Holy Eucharist, may we rejoice with him as we obey his word. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have given each of us life to appreciate and live. We pray this day for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister in blessed memory, Wanda Corber. Dear Lord, accept her into your heavenly kingdom and bless her with your perpetual light. We ask all of this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives the light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God these are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen and for the repose of the souls of our late departed brother, the most reverend John Swante, Emeritus Prime Bishop, and also for the repose of the soul of my dear mother, Wanda J. Corber. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Amen. 
as we pray for all the faithful departed, may they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.